I'm in a field near Driffield in East Yorkshire where our team of archaeologists are busy unearthing the remains of a Roman building. But it's not just any Roman building. We think it is the remains of a mansio, which is basically the Roman equivalent of a B&B, &B, kind of like a modern motorway service station. It's where Roman officials would have stopped off to refuel and rest overnight before continuing their journey onwards. So far, we've uncovered the remains of a courtyard, surrounding buildings, places where food was stored and rubbish was thrown away. We think it all dates back to perhaps the first and second centuries, and it's been a really exciting couple of weeks that we've had here unearthing this building. So, let's go and take a look. We're approaching the Roman building where there is an entranceway that Caroline has been investigating for the last few days. We can see a gap between the two walls and a cobbled surface that might have been the threshold. But there's something really interesting in the corner here. Caroline, can you tell me what you found here this morning? So this morning we excavated a pot um, that was just in this, at the side of this doorway um, by gently scraping round it um, to try and find the bottom. Um, because it's been in the soil for so long, we bandaged around it to make sure um, we didn't damage it as we were taking it out. Um, and it ended up being a pot that's about 30 centimetres deep, maybe. Um, so that was a really exciting um, discovery this morning. That sounds it. And do we have any ideas about why that pot might have been there? What was it doing in the corner of this building? Um, we're not sure, but it looks like it was placed there on purpose. It's quite tall and it was stood upright so someone must have at some point dug a hole to put it in um, so yeah I'm sure you'll find out yeah so we're going to be taking it back to the lab to investigate in a bit more detail and I really look forward to finding out the results in the meantime let's go and take a look inside so we're leaving the room where Caroline has been digging and we're now entering the courtyard it would have been the center and hub of activity in this Roman building we think we've picked up evidence of a wooden structure, maybe a shed or a lean-to where things might have been stored or prepared. But it's over here that we've actually got something really substantial that can give us an important clue to how big the building would once have been. Rosie over here has been investigating a really big Roman wall. Rosie, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been digging? So here we have a wall foundation that is five courses deep. So there are five layers of stone comprising the whole thing. Uh, in between all of the stones, there's this quite thick solid clay packed in, which overall creates a really solid foundation for something quite big above ground, uh, potentially even something with two stories. The wall is also cutting an earlier ditch, although how much earlier is undetermined really quite impressive isn't it and you've had to do a lot of work to get to the bottom of that so I think we're now starting to get an idea of how big and impressive the building itself would once have been but we're now going to look at something a little bit different and go and check out what was happening outside the Roman building we're back outside the Roman building and you can see this huge feature here we've dug a great big slot through it to try and find out what's inside but curiously enough it turned out that there was hardly anything in it that in itself is quite interesting because it suggests to us that this might have been a food storage pit where the Romans would have kept the things that they were going to be eating, a bit like a fridge or a pantry. It's the complete opposite to what we've got over here. Over here we've got a huge cluster of Roman rubbish pits filled with lots and lots of Roman trash. So let's go and talk to Harriet who has been digging over here for the last few days. Hi Harriet. Hi yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how Romans got rid of their rubbish? <laughs> sure. Um, so there were no such thing as landfills or bin men to take away Roman rubbish. Um, so what they would have had to do is find a convenient place on their property um, where they could dig a pit and fill it up with all of the stuff that they needed to get rid of. So that would fill up, you would dig another one, that one would fill up, you would dig another one. Um, so that's why we've got this cluster of pits. And it's quite good for us, isn't it, really, that the Romans had so much stuff and they disposed of so much stuff because we can dig through it and find out loads about what they were doing, what were they eating, what were they consuming. So can you tell us a little bit about what were, they find what were you finding here? Sure. Well, we're getting all the stuff that you would expect to find in a rubbish pit. So we are getting animal bone. We've got things like oyster shells coming up too. Um, and, of course, lots and lots of pottery. 
And that's really great, isn't it? Because it's giving us a really good idea of what they were eating, what they were mm -hmm. serving up to the guests at this possible Roman B&B. Can you tell us a little bit, paint us a little picture of some of the pottery that you've been pulling out of these pits? Yeah. So we've got your sort of everyday pottery, the things that you would use to cook meals in. Um, but then also we've got some really nice stuff too. So we had an absolutely beautiful piece of Samian ware. Um, and that would have been more the sort of showy off stuff, the stuff that you bring out when you're in-laws around at Christmas. Yeah, when you want to impress someone. Exactly. Right? What else have you been finding then, apart from the pottery? So we've had a couple of really, really nice finds too. Um, we have had two interlinked Roman brooches um, and they're really in good condition. Um, they're locked together. Um, yeah, they were really nice. It's baffling then as to why they would have thrown it away, isn't it? They're sort of pinned together a bit like that, almost like someone's taken off their earrings for the night and put them back together so they don't lose them and somehow thrown them into the rubbish pit along the way. Very, very strange. Is. But is there something else? There's something else, isn't there, yes. that came out of this trench really recently, which is really exciting. I yeah, think. so we were very, very excited to get a nice early Roman coin from this pit as well, right where I'm standing. And uh, I think we've just heard back from the lab that it dates to somewhere around AD 92, which is really cool. It's helping us to give um, a really good date for the site and when it was in use. Yes, yeah. So thank you so much, Harriet, for sharing your knowledge of Roman trash. <laughs> I'll let you carry on. And um, it's not just about the archeology, span it is also about the people doing the archeology. span So we're gonna head over and chat to some of the people who have been digging with us over the last few days. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the different skills and techniques you've been learning over the last few days that you've been here? Yeah, um, so on my first day we did the cleaning um, and that was quite therapeutic, like bringing all the dirt back and just learning how hard you can actually go with your trowel. Because um, at the first you kind of start off really gentle and then you, you, know, you kind of get into it a bit more. Well, I think that the new thing that we've been learning is, is about how to document the, the site that we've been digging. So in terms of the, the final measuring and drawing is something that we haven't done before at, at any of the digs that we've been in. So the whole start to finish process of what to do with the finds is uh, new to me. I've dug them out of the ground and cleaned them a little bit before, but I haven't done that whole process, um, specific materials, how you deal with them. So that was the, that was the new thing for me, really. But also, yeah, going from start to finish, we worked on one feature for three days and so it was just a little dimple in the ground when, when we got there um, and then we dug it into a trench and then dug it again and then finally uh, photographed it and did a drawing. You know, there, I don't think there's any one individual thing that I learnt that I could like pinpoint but it's literally just sort of the whole thing, all together, all of it, it was just, yeah really useful. What has been your favourite thing about being part of the dig this year? Um, it's just been really fun. I think my favourite thing has been finding stuff because I've never actually managed to find any artefacts before and um, there's so many here, there's so much to find, so many little bits of pot. I think you know personal highlight would be finding the bottom of the of the ditch that I was digging. It's nice to reach the bottom. It's been really fantastic meeting other people obviously that are into archaeology and have been doing it for a long time because I feel like I've been learning a lot just from talking to people, even in breaks and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's great being involved and in seeing a project like this coming together. It's, um, it's great to work as part of a team um, because we do a lot of knowledge sharing um, and walking around and looking at what other people are doing, you can see that there's an awful lot goes on on a dig. I think one of the things that was uh, the most meaningful for me for the weekend was just being able to be around lots of people who have lots of skills and specialisms in different areas and can sort of bring it all together and contextualise it and who are happy to talk to you about those things and will listen to me and my love of archaeology as well so that's been a real bonus. You know just seeing that really the whole process um, instead of just digging to find things you know that's not what it's all about um, it's really understanding the process how the whole site was used and putting all those pieces together um, and, and, and being part of that because I think that the archaeologists have have asked us the question well what do you think you know and we're like oh well, what do we think, you know? And um, so I think that's been really interesting for us. So.
Well, I've really enjoyed showing you around our Roman building and introducing you to our Mancio, otherwise known as our Roman B&B. I hope you've enjoyed learning about what we've been discovering and hearing about what some of the ventures have been up to this year. We're so grateful to everyone who has supported and crowdfunded the dig, and we're really looking forward to coming back next year to continue our investigations. We hope to see you there. Yes, I have legs. <laughs>